You're watching News 4 Midday. Can you train your brain? In his new book, Long Fuse Big Bang, neuroscientist Dr. Eric Hasseltine explains how to use brain power to pursue major goals and strategic successes. Dr. Hasseltine joins us this morning with some insight, because I think we'd all like to be able to train our brains if it'll help us to be successful. L let's talk, though, a little bit about your background to begin with. You've worked and still do for the U.S. intelligence community. You've also worked for Disney. Tell us about what you do. Well, I was a brain scientist who went bad. After finishing a postdoc in neuroanatomy at Vanderbilt Medical School, I went into the aerospace and defense business where I pioneered a technology, among others, uh, called virtual reality. And then when the Berlin Wall came down, I decided to take my skills into the entertainment world and I worked at Disney for 10 years, starting off in their virtual reality studio. Wow. And I eventually became the executive vice president there of Imagineering in charge of all the corporate R&D. And after 9-11, the intelligence community was criticized for not having an imagination. So since I was a senior executive at an organization whose name was Imagineering, <laughs> they figured, well, this guy has to have an imagination. Let's hire him. And they have used you. Oh, yeah. Well, I, was I suppose the, a lot of those things you can't tell us about. That's true. But I was the associate director at NSA in charge of research and development. And then I got promoted when the Office of the Director of National Intelligence was created. And I became the chief technology officer for the U.S. intelligence community. And were you, were you retraining their brains? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> For the good, we hope. We um, want to talk a little bit about some of the things that you say, because we, this, this is your new book, Long Fuse, Big Bang, and you say that people can achieve long-term success through some daily victories. And one of them is to learn how to use your brain in ways that most of us don't. So let's take a look at some of the brain teasers that you brought with us. Let's take a look at, at the first one that we have here. There it is, the two tables. Now you say we look at those and we see two different sizes and yet they are the same size. Right. You see that. What does this mean? Well, what it means is your brain achieves its marvelous accomplishments by cheating. It doesn't try to do everything rigorously. It only does what it thinks is good enough. It makes educated guesses. And so here, your brain makes an educated guess about how long that table is, but it guesses wrong. And yeah. what this really, this demo is meant to show you is you can't trust your brain. In its effort to filter out information it doesn't think you need, it uh, actually hides things from you that sometimes you do need. So the, basically, your brain is very unreliable and you shouldn't believe it. And yet, <laughs> and yet what are you going to count on if you can't count on your brain? Well, that's a tough well, one, isn't it? It is. Let's take a look at another brain teaser you brought. Two men on a bridge. Now, the one in the back, and we're looking like we're looking at depth, so the big one looks like he's really far away, but yet when you bring him forward, he's exactly the same size. Right. Another example of... It's a cheat. Um, instead of rigorously calculating the math of how big that man is, it says, well, it looks like it's farther away, but it's the same size as the one in the foreground, therefore it must be bigger. And that's an error. And your brain takes these shortcuts so it doesn't have to expend more energy doing the full calculation. Why does your brain want to go to these shortcuts? And let's take a look quickly at the Rubik's Cube because that's another one that I found kind of interesting. You sent us quite a few of these brain teasers. If we have the Rubik's Cube, that's uh, um, the one where it looks like right. the colors are different, but they actually are exactly the same because your brain sees all the color around it. And uh, anyway, let's, we want to show the, you this one, though, the card trick. Let's see that one. There's, uh, we want you to look at this these cards. Okay, those of you who are watching, pick a card. Quickly pick a card and remember it. Okay? Right. It's and gone, right? That's right. And uh, we did that because in the short time we put that up, I read your mind, you and the viewing audience, and I knew which card it was and I removed the one that you picked. Which so is the question not very is, true. how did I do that? Yes. Well, it isn't really true because what I did is I changed out all the cards. You change them all out, but most people won't figure that out. Right, and that's what we call change blindness. And that means that your brain only pays attention to changes that thinks are going to matter. And it didn't, in this case, think that exact numbers of the cards mattered, so it blinded you to what was really there. So quickly, Dr. Hasseltine, can you tell us how we can use that, brain teasers like that, to retrain our brains so that we can be more successful? Well, the first thing is to realize that our brains are actually 50,000 years out of date. They evolved to their current state about 50,000 years ago when every day we faced life and death situations. So our brains have what's called temporal myopia, which means we only look at what's here and now right in front of us. For example, most of your viewing audience can relate to every day is whacking moles and putting out fires. The tyranny of the urgent trumps the pursuit of the important. 
We never get around to those really important things because we have this artificial sense that everything's urgent. So the main thing is to realize that. And then the point of these tricks I just showed is that big opportunities, really big opportunities, hide in plain sight and your brain just takes them away from you. So you gotta sit back, relax, Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Or two. And look for what's back behind the real thing. I, a lot of answers in Long Fuse, Big Bang. We thank you so much for coming. Were you a whiz kid when you were a little guy? I was a nerd before we had that <laughs> word. I hate to say it. Well, it's very interesting having you, and thanks for coming. Thank you so much, Barbara. Thank you for being here, Dr. Eric Hasseltine.